So this is just a shot of the homemade print washer. So uh, I'll start here. First of all, I suppose I should say that the whole print washer is simply a container from Woody's. Um, I think it's a 45 or 65 liter container, but basically big enough that you can put a 12. 12 by 16 print in there to wash, which is the biggest that I'm ever likely to print. So, um, to start with the inlet, here's your inlet. Uh, you need some kind of a tap on the inlet and then a feed into the tank. This water feeds in through this, uh, this is poly pipe, it's waste pipe that's commonly used uh, as an overflow pipe in attics. You get it in any of the B&Q, Woody's, any of those kind of places. And that pipe feeds in down to the bottom of the tank and exits, exits through at the bottom corner down here. On the opposite side, this is the outflow over here. And this pipe is just maybe uh, half an inch maybe off the floor, comes straight through the tank and exits down out through this pipe and into the sink where it can flow out. The interesting part is this part here, which I'll come back to in one second. So, to use the tank, what happens is uh, you turn on the tap, the tank will start to fill up to the top, and as it reaches the top here, what happens is the water starts to trickle over and flow out, as you can imagine. But at that point, the water is still flowing in faster than it's going out, and that continues until maybe the tank reaches almost to the brim, and sometimes very close to the brim. When all of a sudden the siphon start action starts and the flow increases dramatically, the flow outwards, so the water is actually being sucked out. So I don't know if you can see, there's quite a flow of water happening here at the moment, coming out here, even though the water is now below the level of the pipe here. So that brings me back to the cocktail stick in the little hole. So what you need, that's too much water to be using all the time for, for washing your prints. So what you need to do is to have some method of controlling that siphon. And this little air hole is exactly that method. So what happens is when you when you establish full flow, what you can do is you can I don't know if you heard that little suction happening there, but uh, let's let's just let's just watch what happens here. So the water starts to fill back up again. See it filling nicely there. Let's put the cocktail stick back in. So the water is flowing in here um, very quickly, starting to fill. And right about now, you'll start to see flow is just starting to come again here. But even at that, the water is still filling into this tank quicker than it's emptying. So you can see the water, water is still rising here. So the full siphon action hasn't happened here yet. At a point, you can hear the change in flow. All of a sudden, the water starts to flow at a much higher rate. In this case, the water is just here, so it's above the level of the pipe. And here now, I'm going to pull the cocktail stick and listen for the suction. Okay. And that draft dramatically reduces the siphon action. And as a result then, the water flow outwards stops. But to balance that, you must also reduce the inflow and if you just balance it, you get used to this after the first couple of times, but uh, if you balance it just right, the water flow balances, the water flow in, the water flow out balances, and you end up with a system with a continuously recharging with fresh water and being exhausted at the same time. And you can see there's still quite a significant flow out there. So that's still a, a, a good amount of water flowing through. But yet the water now will stay at that level.
and not increase or decrease. And this has been stable over weeks and weeks and weeks in the system as the basis of the Versa Lab system and so on. Uh, a couple of design points. Um, the siphon, the exit point of the siphon needs to be a decent, decent distance below the bottom of the washer. In other words, if I hadn't got this extension pipe on the bottom to drop it another few inches, and this here was the bottom of the water, it was the bottom of my suction pipe, my uh, siphon pipe, I wouldn't get proper flow. Uh, it's a really good idea to sit this on a sink of some nature, like what I've done here, so that if there is an overflow, it'll all drain down into the sink in a way, and you're not going to end up with a couple of inches of water on the floor. Likewise, the tank is plastic. Eventually, at some stage, it may go brittle, and you might be inclined, uh, it might be inclined to split or crack. You've got to allow a little bit for that. So I tend to leave this tank emptied when I walk away from it. And finally, um, it's a good practice not to leave the water full of tank, the tank full of water, because um, with no flow going through it, because you will get evaporation and. If you go away for a week or a fortnight and don't come back to print, you'll tend to get a lot of uh, evaporation and particularly the top of the uh, tank, you'll get a lot of uh, scum around the top of the tank, just dissolved minerals and whatnot from the water. So um, the internal dividers then, all these are, are sheets of uh, perspex that I had at home. Um, they're, there's a couple of aluminium rods pinned through on the bottom, so I just cut all the sheets big enough to hold a 16 by 12 print, stacked them all together, held them all together with a clamp and then drilled the hole, a 6 mil hole at three points through the bottom and put through some 6 mil rod, which you know, you get in any of the woodies, again, B&Q, any of those. And those veins are just simply, uh, the, the separators are just sitting on those. There's no glue, there's no separation, there's no nuts holding things in place or anything like that. So they are quite free to move. Uh, on the top, I had a little spare piece of the pipe, the poly pipe, and all I did was I cut slots in it. So that keeps the veins separated on the top. It's as simple as that. The cut in the middle is just so that I can get my hand down in there if, say, I've got a narrower print or a smaller piece of paper or whatever gets in there. At least I can kind of get in there with my hand to get in on it. And that is the print washer. I hope it's been of use to you.